Grammar Girl here. I'm Mignon Fogarty, and you can think of me as your friendly guide to the English language. Writing, history, rules, and cool stuff. Today, I have a meaty middle about the phrase, all of a sudden, and a quick and dirty tip about bated breath. Let's get started. A few months ago, in a Slack channel for podcasters, one of my friends posted a grammar gripe. He wrote, quote, This grammar pet peeve has been bugging me a lot lately because I've seen it used in very prominent places, all of a sudden. It's supposed to be all of the sudden, but simply saying suddenly sounds a whole lot more grown up, unquote. It was interesting because he had it backwards. All of a sudden is the right way to say it, but when he heard it that way, apparently it bugged him. I've occasionally gotten questions about the phrase over the years, but in the week after my friend raised the issue, I got two or three more questions about these all of something sudden phrases, so I decided it was time to look into it more deeply than I had when I just gave people simple answers before. First, all of the sudden is definitely a phrase you should avoid. Garner's modern English usage includes an entry on all of the sudden and pegs it at stage one on the language change index, which means rejected. In other words, still totally wrong. The Chicago Manual of Style Q&A section says, quote, The CMOS is silent on the issue, but all of the sudden is not idiomatic and normally would be edited to all of a sudden, unquote. Even if you look at much more informal language, all of a sudden is the clear winner. For example, in Mark Davies' BYU corpus of language used in TV shows since the 1950s, there are more than 5,500 instances of all of a sudden, and only 133 of all of the sudden. Next, I wondered whether all of the sudden could be a regional saying, since my friend who complained is from Ohio— And another friend who's in the Slack channel and also from Ohio also said he's an all-of-the-sudden kind of guy. But Gabe Doyle of the Motivated Grammar website looked at tweets that used all-of-a-sudden and all-of-the-sudden and didn't find any evidence that there's a regional difference. There doesn't seem to be a place where people are more likely to say all-of-the-sudden. The evolution of the phrase is kind of interesting, too. It was originally the-sudden, but it lacked an all in front. For example, the first citation in the Oxford English Dictionary is from 1570, and it's of the sudden. Here's one from Shakespeare's Taming of the Shrew, published around 1616. By then, it had become of a sudden. Is it possible that love should of a sudden take such hold? It's not until 1686 that all comes into play, and from there on, all of a sudden seems to be the standard. There was a similar phrase that the OED says was very common between about 1560 and 1700, and it could use either the or a. It was on the sudden, or on a sudden. And as I read the citations, I found that they did have an old-timey feel to me. Here's one from The Life and Strange Surprising Adventures of Robin Crusoe by Daniel Defoe. My crop promised very well when on a sudden I found I was in danger of losing it all again. More recently, looking at a Google Ngram chart, that is, how often a phrase appears in published books scanned by Google, what most people consider the incorrect form, all of the sudden, slowly starts increasing around 1960 and then really takes off around 1985. In fact, all but four of the examples in that corpus of language people use on TV that I mentioned earlier, all but four of those came after 1985. So it looks like this really is a relatively new phenomenon. Finally, you might be wondering why one is wrong and the other is right, since they're the same grammatically. For example, a listener named Melissa mentioned that when she asked about the two phrases. Someone corrected her, and she accepted that she was wrong, but said she, quote, couldn't understand what would make the less correct than a, and she has a point. A and the are both articles, and we can usually use them both before any noun. All of a sudden is just what we call an idiom, which is a fancy way of saying that's just how it is. It's right the way it is because that's how people are used to hearing it. There's no rule or grammatical reason for it. It just is. So that's your quick and dirty tip. The correct phrase in English is all of a sudden, not all of the sudden. 
Before we get to bated breath, today we're sponsored by Babbel, the language learning app that'll get you speaking a new language quickly and with confidence. Choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, and German. Babbel is designed to get you speaking your new language within weeks, and it's been proven effective across multiple studies. Babbel's quick, engaging lessons are lovingly created by more than 100 language experts. They're real people, not a translation machine. And Babbel is available as an app or online, and your progress will be synced across all devices. Be bold this summer and learn a new language with Babbel like I am. I spend 15 to 30 minutes almost every day doing a short Babbel Spanish lesson or going over what I've already learned with the built-in review flashcards. I look forward to it. It's fun. All it takes is a few steps to speak a new language with confidence. Go to Babbel.com or download the app. Select the language of your choice and try it free. That's Babbel, B-A-B-B-E-L dot com. Babbel, speak a new language with confidence. And now, on to bated breath. Bated is one of many words Shakespeare invented, or at least he was the first person to put the word on a piece of paper that survived to this day. Bated is a form of the word abate, which means to diminish, beat down, or reduce, and it's spelled B-A-T-E-D. So when you're waiting with bated breath, you can think of that as a bated breath, You're so eager, anxious, excited, or frightened that you're almost holding your breath. You're reducing your breath. Shakespeare first used the phrase, with bated breath, in The Merchant of Venice. It's a scene where Shylock, the moneylender, points out the irony of Antonio, the merchant, coming to him for a loan after treating him so poorly in the past. It reads like this. Shall I bend low and in a bondsman's key, with bated breath and whispering humbleness? Say this, fair sir, you spit on me Wednesday last. You spurned me such a day. Another time you called me a dog. And for these courtesies, I'll lend you thus much monies? That set phrase, with bated breath, is the only place you'll hear the word bated used these days. And since baited is such an archaic word and most people aren't used to seeing it, it's common to see the phrase incorrectly written as with baited breath, B-A-I-T-E-D, like baiting a hook in fishing. There's an odd logic to the baited misunderstanding. You can bait a hook to catch a fish, and people eagerly waiting for something could be tempted to put out metaphorical bait. But why would it be their breath? It wouldn't. Nobody would rush toward fishy breath. Baited breath spelled that way, like fish bait, is wrong. Your quick and dirty tip is to remember the moneylender Shylock and his abated, held-back breath. Finally today, I have a familect story for you from a podcast host from my own network. Hey, Grammar Girl, this is Brock Armstrong, uh, otherwise known as Get Fit Guy, and I have a sort of familect for you. It's, I'm going to call it a bandelect, and I'll, I'll, I'll explain why. And it's, it's kind of a two for one as well. So before I was a Get Fit Guy, I was in a band for about 10 years, and we traveled for eight of those years, toured incessantly. And we had this term for the people who had drunkenly come up to us after the shows and just sort of babble drunkenly at us. We called them Meow Meows. And that was based on the Mr. Rogers character, the little cat puppet that basically just always said, Meow, 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 Mr. Rogers, Meow, 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 because that's kind of what the drunk people sounded like to us. But the <laughs> the the two for one that we get here is that if you as a band member who were saddled with a meow meow were able to pass that person to another band member and escape we called that passing the monkey so <laughs> so you've got two there you got the meow meows and you also have the successful passing of the monkey so I hope you like those. I know they're not exactly familex, but it's something that we used and, and still refer to today. So, all right. Thanks, Grammar Girl. Keep up the good work. Thanks, Brock. It was such a fun surprise to get this message, and I followed up. He was in a Celtic rock band that toured mostly across Canada, but also in New Zealand and Europe a couple of times. 
They have a music video up on YouTube called The Last Saskatchewan Pirate, and it's really fun and has been viewed more than 700,000 times. So today you can listen to Brock's Get Fit Guy podcast or work out with him through brockarmstrong.com. But before he joined Quick and Dirty Tips, he was a Celtic rocker. I'm Mignon Fogarty, better known as Grammar Girl, and my producer is Nathan Sams. Grammar Girl is part of the Quick and Dirty Tips podcast network, which I founded, and which also has a bunch of other podcasts. Learn new things every week by listening to Money Girl, The Savvy Psychologist, The Get It Done Guy, and a whole bunch more, like The Get Fit Guy. Check them out wherever you listen to podcasts. That's all. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.